This is my brutally honest review of The Sims 4 Growing Together. This is a part of a series where I review every pack for The Sims 4. The Sims 4 Growing Together is about making key choices and going through milestones in your Sims lives. Having a much more enhanced social dynamic system, making relationships feel more natural in the game, and focusing on family gameplay and family ties. Taking a look at the cast, it has a vintage theme. It's a really nice theme which we haven't really seen much before in The Sims 4 in this respect and all of the stuff looks really nice. There are a decent amount of swatches for most things and I feel like you can get some nice outfits out of it. The pack has a lot more of a balance between men's and women's stuff compared to other packs which is nice. We also have a nice men's tracksuit which we don't have much of in the game. I'm glad there are a lot of elder appropriate outfits in this pack too. No other pack really has elder appropriate outfits and I feel like you can make much better outfits elder sims with this pack more so than any other pack. Although weirdly the pack doesn't come with any shoes. Infants come with a lot of nice cast. There is definitely enough cast for infants in the base game though so don't feel like you have to get grown together in order to get nice cast for infants. But the cast for infants in grown together is definitely a really nice addition. The outfits are actually quite strong and I'm really pleasantly surprised at how well designed they are. Unfortunately though vintage fashion has not been added as a fashion choice in likes and dislikes. In the cast menu, you can choose sim characteristics which have an impact on how they gain relationship with other sims. I felt like there was a lot which allows you to make your sims more individual. You can also choose from conversation topics which affect social interactions with other sims. As with the characteristics, there are literally tons to choose from and now we can have up to 50 likes and dislikes so it really helps to make your sims feel more unique. They're also very much cross-pack compatible which is great. The only strange thing is that some of these may conflict with personality traits and I don't know if that's just an afterthought when adding them. For example, a sim can have a characteristic to be active but at the same time you can make them a lazy sim. So it seems a bit weirdly implemented in some respects. In cast you can select family dynamics as close, distant, supportive, permissive, difficult, strict and jokesters. These affect the ways that your sims interact with each other. I'll go with this more in the gameplay section. Although weirdly, if your fiancés you can't select a family dynamic. You can only select it for example if it's husband or wife which I think is very strange. It just feels like a very very conservative way of going about them. In the real world many people have long-term relationships but they're not married and it just doesn't really make that much sense to me. Although I will go over these a lot more in the gameplay section. In all I actually think the cast is really nice and really strong. The cast gets a 9 out of 10. Taking a look at build mode I will say the build and buy stuff is very mixed. I honestly couldn't tell you what the theme of the build stuff is. I want to say it looks like The Sims 4 base game but like a more enhanced version of it. There are a variety of objects for most rooms in a standard household. I wouldn't say the pack has a theme when it comes to build mode though. For example it has a kitchen oven and a fridge but it doesn't have cabinets or a counter or it has a shower and a sink but not a toilet. Some things look really modern, other things look very retro. There are a lot of child friendly community lot things that are very blocky and colourful which I believe are made to be suitable for the library and recreational centre builds in the world. It contains quite a lot of household furniture and decorations although nothing really matches and it's all very random. The stuff is definitely very nice and I'm really happy with the amount of decorative objects that we have in the pack. I just don't get it. Most definitely this is one of the more weaker packs for built mode. It has some really well designed stuff especially the sofas and a lot of the architecture looks really nice especially the doors and windows with this pack are amazing. I just don't know how well it really fits together as a piece. To be honest I would have expected more objects for things like children as they don't really have that much in the game and I think the pack would have been well suited to have some nice things to decorate children's bedrooms or some remeshes of some random children's objects that they can play with. And by children by the way I mean kids, infants and toddlers. There are some random posters for kids room and some random infant toys but I feel like they could have done a lot more. Some things are really nice but I personally wouldn't make good use of the build stuff in this pack unless you're like a proper builder. It feels too scattered for me to say it's really worth getting just for the build stuff. Unless you're a builder who loves a huge array of different assets to work with, I personally think it's one of the weaker packs for build mode. So the build mode for The Sims 4 Growing Together gets a 4 out of 10. The world is called San Sequoia and it comes with 12 lots with 3 neighbourhoods, 4 lots in each. The first neighbourhood comes with a library which is well made 
arcade and nice to visit for family gameplay. It looks like a proper real life library and I really like it. It also contains a movie theater from which you can watch a random selection of movies which give you a small moodlet buff after watching. This is a rabbit hole experience. It's a very small but nice addition. The next area is purely residential. There's a harbor here with a nice looking restaurant, although don't get too excited as you can't interact with it. It's just a decoration. There is basically nothing to do here other than the same old, same old search for frogs in a log or fish in the lake. The next area is another residential area with a recreation center, which is a new lot type, but I'll go over that more in the gameplay section. There's also a water park here to splash in the water with your sim. In this area, there's a park from which you can go walking in. It's not really intuitive how to do it, but basically there's signs and you can click on a sign and it comes up with different options such as taking a stroll or something. I make my sim walk around the park and surprise, surprise, she walked around the park. I can't say it's the most engaging form of gameplay I've ever seen. I personally didn't get a dopamine hit from watching it, but it's there if you want it. As with every single Sims 4 world, San Sequoia has no gameplay. It's moderately good looking, but it's basically an extension of Willow Creek and offers nothing new in terms of value. I don't feel like this world expands on anything we haven't seen before in the game. For a world that has some very big areas, there's literally nothing to do. You can't build anywhere outside the lot, so nothing is really usable in the world. There are no gameplay objects in the game that can be placed around the world to be used. Even so, a lot of decorative buildings look really weirdly low res and it's very difficult to know which are real lots to visit and which are fake. It's a boring, willow creaky, stale environment which doesn't need to exist and doesn't add anything new to the game. The world is absolutely shocking. I'm sorry, it's getting a 1 out of 10. Taking a look at the gameplay, there is a lot here. Growing Together basically works like seasons in the way that it impacts your day-to-day -day gameplay rather than having a whole unique experience. Firstly, there's a play mat for infants, although mine was sad, so we didn't want to play on it. It also comes with a baby changing table for changing diapers and a bin to put diapers in. Although I wouldn't say that I'm pleased that this is locked behind a paywall, I wouldn't call it engaging pack content and it should have come with the base game infants update. The pack also comes with a treehouse object which can be built as a family. It actually has a lot of depth and can receive some upgrades to make it more unique. There are loads of options for like kids only or teens only allowed. You can decorate it in many different ways and you can actually place certain objects in the treehouse such as a telescope to make it more unique which is quite cool. I think it's really great to see so much customization although unfortunately the kids slide is exclusively only playable with the treehouse. There is no kids slide that can be placed separately. I know that's disappointing. Although yes you can make two adult sims woohoo in the treehouse if you'd like to. Children can learn how to ride a bike. It's nice that they can actually learn how to use one instead of just automatically being able to, which is a nice mechanic. Children have some new aspirations too, by the way. Most of these just relate to skill gaining. Before we get into the family gameplay, taking a look at the recreational center, somebody on the Sims team confirmed art classes would exist in this pack, although the recreational center doesn't have art classes. It has a room with easels, but it doesn't actually have classes, which I thought was a little bit misleading. The recreational center literally offers no new games play really. It functions as a library and a gym and a place to do art and it doesn't actually come with any new gameplay features other than symbols which is basically Scrabble and you can do jigsaws. Jigsaws can be pre-selected or you can take a photo and make a jigsaw from the photo. Puzzle pieces can be stolen by naughty people if you're feeling sadistic. I honestly don't know why this lot exists as it is. It's literally just like a Sims 4 library. You can have certain events in there such as a baby shower or slumber party but you can do those in almost any other lot anyway. I just feel like there should have been some extra functionality here in order to actually make them unique because it is literally just a library. In terms of the events I make my sim have a baby shower you can actually perform this even if your sim is not pregnant by the way. I guess because some sims have them through surrogacy so it makes sense. For events like this the pack comes with a cannon which shoots confetti. I guess it's nice. During the event guests can give you gifts. For me these were toys in a bassinet which are exclusive to the event and can cannot be obtained by normal means of getting them from the build catalog. The event was tragic as every Sims event is. Sims were doing press ups at random times, interactions kept cancelling, everybody was seat hopping. It was an absolute disaster. Slumber parties are another event and spoiler alert it was another disaster. You can do this from kids up. I did mine as adults though but for me Sims just didn't do what they were supposed to do. I couldn't find half the 
right interactions to complete the missions as a new social pie menu is so confusing and not intuitive. There was lots of action cancelling. I actually completed some event tasks, but they weren't logging as completed correctly. I tried to make the Sims sleep, but they didn't sleep, even though it's a slumber party. So it was broken for me. It doesn't exist, but I would have liked a sex reveal party as I feel like that's a fundamental part of, you know, having a baby and growing together. But it is what it is. The game has a keepsake box, which can be filled with almost any object. It doesn't really have any proper gameplay functionality other than it belongs basically to an elder sim in a household and then they can pass it on through generations. You can fill it with almost any item, but I guess you want to fill it with sentimental things. I think it's a very small touch, but a very nice touch for legacy players. And I think legacy players will really enjoy it. Children can also make friendship bracelets and give them to other sims. Although for this to work, the other sim has to have a friendship bracelet in their inventory in order to exchange them. You can't just like give a sim one, which I thought was a bit weird, but I think it's a very small touch. But again, just like with the keepsake box, a very nice touch for legacy players and family players who enjoy the smaller details in the game. With growing together, infants have quirks. These are like behavioral traits. My sim had frequently sneezes, self-soother and hates wake up time. These all had the expected results of an infant sneezing a lot and being annoyed when he had to be woken up. I think these are again, very small details that only proper family gameplay players will appreciate, but it gives them a lot more depth, which is nice. Sims of all ages have milestones. These are best described as like Xbox trophies or PlayStation trophies that you get for completing certain things in games. Basically like a life achievement system, but it's also kind of like memories. Most of these are hidden and developed naturally, but some are hinted towards completion throughout gameplay. It's basically just text with a corresponding image and it's a Sims 4's answer to a memory system. I actually think it's a good memory system and it serves its purpose very well. As far as I'm aware though, it doesn't have an in-depth gameplay consequence to it and it's difficult to understand the difference between these and the base game sentiments very well as the lines are very blurred. In the promotion of the pack, milestones were very heavily marketed, although for me personally, I didn't really understand the big deal as it's a very minor thing. If I bought a game like GTA, I couldn't imagine buying a pack just for an achievement system. It feels a little bit cash grabby to me if I'm being brutally honest, but I guess if you're a family player or a legacy player, you will appreciate these. Adult sims can now have a midlife crisis. These can occur when a sim is in a bad mood, for example, if they're doing something they really hate constantly, basically if they hate their lives. Midlife crises act like aspirations to achieve with goals to complete in order to get over them. These can only occur in adult sims and not young adult sims. I honestly think it's really cool and I love that it's an addition to the game that only adult sims can have specifically and I think it gives a lot more depth to people who enjoy legacy gameplay. Really, really love this feature. The Growing Together pack unlocks an extra three personality traits which are unlocked through gameplay. That's right, having personality in the game is now pay to win. Although unfortunately it isn't implemented in the most intuitive way. For example, my sim who hates fitness decided that he wanted to have an active personality trait unlocked even though he hates being active. I do think it's really nice to have a bonus three personality traits and especially the fact that they are added naturally through organic gameplay because these are how people's personalities develop over time in real life and I think psychologically it's a really nice addition to the game and it makes it feel more real. I just don't know how I feel about having these locked behind a paywall having to pay to give your sims more personality. Forgive me if I'm wrong but I believe a while ago someone who worked on the sims 4 once said that the game only had three personality traits in order to avoid conflict issues. So now that they've added more, will it result in conflicting problems with the coding? I'm not really sure how I feel about this edition. It is a very nice edition. I just feel like it should have been base game. But looking on the bright side, I think it's cool that Sims can develop traits over time and it feels very organic. Household relationships are now affected by the family dynamics I mentioned in the cast section. I didn't actually set mine in cast. I chose to let mine develop naturally over time. The mother and daughter in my household had a difficult dynamic. In general, they had more autonomous negative interactions as a result. On the contrary, the father and daughter had a jokester dynamic and they had a lot more kind of funny banter with each other with a lot more funny interactions. I think this is a really nice feature and it adds a lot of depth to gameplay to those who pay attention to the smaller details. This along with the new personality preferences and conversation preferences and likes and dislikes really, really helped to give my sims a lot more personality. I think the sims 4 has always lacked personality and dynamics and I think these features 
features are really, really great for making gameplay a lot more meaningful. And this is something that family and legacy players will appreciate for sure. Relatives who don't live in your household may pop up now and then to stay with you for a while. You can choose to let them stay and relax or you can ask them to do chores. I think it's a nice feature and makes the game feel a lot more natural. For example, when family members who don't live with you turn up to stay because before then, you know, if somebody moved out the house, they were basically abandoned. When they arrive, they arrive with a suitcase, which is a new object in the game. It basically functions exactly the same as a wardrobe. Children can also develop confidence or a lack thereof during development. When they age into a teen, they're either locked into having high, low or neutral confidence, which can affect their lives going forward. I think it's a nice touch, which definitely gives Sims a lot more depth and makes family gameplay a lot more challenging. This pack is almost exclusively good to those who only love family gameplay and legacy gameplay. The expansion pack itself is extremely subtle. Most of it is just text and images and coding that affects base game interactions. As I'm not much of a family player myself, it wasn't really that enjoyable for me, but I can totally see this pack being fundamental to those who do enjoy family gameplay. The way the pack affects your sims' lives require you to be very attentive to how your sims interact with each other in order to fully appreciate it. That means if you're the kind of person who plays a game in speed 3 mode, it's probably not for you. This is definitely for a speed 1 player. The expansion pack I admit feels very lacklustre in that it doesn't really expand on the game by offering anything that new. It more so just enhances what already exists in the base game and doesn't really add any fundamental groundbreaking new features itself. The world is the same old base game Willow Creaky style world. The build buy is very base game looking. The gameplay literally is the base game, but with better coding. I just don't really feel like it came with any groundbreaking stuff. Being brutally honest, I feel like this is a game pack's worth of content. Excluding build mode cast in the world, it's just a game pack in my eyes. And the lines are tremendously blurred with parenthood and the base game itself. I honestly like still don't really know what this pack is. If you were to ask me what Discover University is, I'd say it's a pack about going to university. If you ask me what the seasons pack was, I'd say it's a pack about bringing seasons and seasonal activities to your game. But if you ask me what growing together is, I genuinely could not give you an answer. For me, this pack just feels like an overhaul to the base game rather than an expansion pack. It's like a coding overhaul to sim interactions in order to make them feel more meaningful. A lot of the major features in this pack aren't that major and contain many things that existed in base games of The Sims 2 and The Sims 3. In that sense, I feel like it makes The Sims 4 feel very pay to win and I don't feel comfortable with that. As constructive criticism to EA, I think the recreational center should have had a lot more unique gameplay such as the ability to actually go to or hold specific hobby or skill related classes and also have cross pack play with that for example with like flower ranging from seasons or just base game things like painting or a computer programming class or something. Also the pack should most definitely have come with a daycare career. I'm so surprised that it didn't get one. In my personal opinion every single Sims 4 expansion pack should have a career and it didn't come with one. I also think that there's should have been a brand new lot type called a children's park or a playground or you know those like indoor soft play areas. I feel like it could have come with some more objects along those lines if I'm being honest. At this point in my speculative opinion based on no evidence, I feel like this pack is just kind of like a coding test for The Sims 5. The gameplay department is lacking a lot and a lot of people are describing this as a huge fundamental pack for The Sims 4 but having played it I just feel like it's a pack that's best suited to those who really love the tiny intricate details of family gameplay and legacy gameplay. It's definitely a good pack in terms of overhauling social dynamics in the game and just making the game feel more alive and making it feel as it should. I just feel like we've already experienced this pack in the Sims 2 base game and the Sims 2 was released in 2004 so you can draw your own conclusions about that. For me personally it's not an expansion pack and and there is definitely not enough gameplay and too much text boxes and images. It's getting a 3 out of 10 for the gameplay. In terms of performance, sims click through each other when walking up the treehouse, which is a little bit ugly. When practicing learning how to ride a bike as a child, you can get an adult to help you, although my sim couldn't get an adult because it said there were no nearby who were available, even though there definitely was. As I said before, interactions
attractions kept cancelling during the baby shower and the slumber party events making them basically unplayable and very frustrating. During the slumber party, sleeping bags were also piled up on top of each other and clipping through each other. It was a little bit messy, but across the board, it did perform pretty well in terms of the major features. So it's getting a 7 out of 10 for performance. In terms of cross-pack play, milestones in this pack are totally cross-pack compatible with a lot of other packs. Milestones were considered for almost all major packs, and I think it's really great that they made an effort to think about these. For example, if you own the high school years pack, there's milestones about dropping out of high school or getting expelled or graduating. If you have snow we escape, there's a milestone about climbing to the top of Mount Komarebi in the game. If you have the paranormal stuff pack, there's a milestone about enduring a haunted house in the game. Like, there is a lot. Characteristics shown in the likes and dislikes are also very compatible for cross-pack traits, which is really, really great. Growing together fits in very well with every other pack. In this sense, as I said before, it feels like seasons and that it's not really a groundbreaking pack itself, but more so just interacts with everything else that exists in the game. The only thing I will say is the lines are very heavily blurred between growing together and parenthood and I feel like growing together should have been a parenthood refresh if I'm being honest or the pack should have just been merged into one in some way. It's a good pack for cross pack play. It's getting 9 out of 10. So breaking down my overall conclusion if this pack is going to make you rage, <laughs> I'm giving it a 5.5 .5 out of 10. This expansion pack is not an expansion pack. It's a coding overhaul which makes it feel like you're playing The Sims 2 in my opinion. It adds a lot of really great features to make the game feel whole and I know some people will say things like I'm being really inconsiderate of the effort that went into the pack or how it's unrealistic to expect EA to give this much content away for free as some kind of base game update but at the end of the day I don't care I'm an end consumer I don't purchase a pack of pencils and feel extremely grateful to the factory workers who make them as an end consumer it is not your place to have this sense of morality when purchasing a product The Sims 4 is a product and it is a product that released on extremely rocky grounds being the most bland sims title to ever be released when it was first released. As an end consumer it's not my problem they waited eight years to sort the game out. The pack makes the sims 4 feel like a good base game but for me growing together is not an expansion pack and does not come with an expansion packs worth of content. It feels like the sims 4 base game 2.0 and that is honestly the best way I can describe it. If you appreciated this review I have a whole playlist of brutally honest reviews I update very regularly including for all of the older packs too. Thank you very much for watching I'll see you in the next one.